A telling thing happened a while back when Jesus was standing in front of Pontius Pilate. It's right here in the Bible, John 18, 37. Jesus says to him, for this purpose I was born and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Now, Pilate says this, wait for it. He says, what is truth? Shabam, there it is, the big kahuna, the spicy enchilada, the fizzy lifting drink, the question of the ages, and it's not much different today, which is why you hear claims like it's true for you, but not for me, or there is no truth, or truth is relative, bro, or the ever so popular speak your truth. Now, these things all sound nice and sweetie sweet, but what in the world do they mean? Well, let's take it's true for you, but not for me. Now, in all honesty, doesn't the person who says this to you want you to believe what he's saying? He's assuming that his relativistic claim is universally true, right? Everything is relative, I guess, except his relativism. Now, if something can only be true for me, which it can't, then it doesn't apply to you or anyone else, so what's the point in saying it? But if it is true for everyone, then the claim is wrong because it's only claiming to be true for me and not for you. Get it? Okay, maybe it's not clear right this second, but things that contradict themselves, like this claim, cannot be true. What about the claim there is no truth? Oh, yet another statement that demolishes itself by its own standard. After all, is that claim true? If so, it's wrong. If the claim is not true, then it's true that the statement there is no truth is not true, which means there is truth, which makes the claim false. Moving on to the popular speak your truth. I gotta ask you in all seriousness, is there really your truth and my truth? Truth is what is. It corresponds to reality. It's black and white, either or, fact kind of stuff, right? Tiny Tammy tossed the toy pterodactyl tenderly into the Thames that Tuesday, or she didn't. It's pretty simple, really. Truth is truth, and it doesn't change with the pronoun. Now, you might disagree and throw your hands up in objection, that is, until, of course, you are on the receiving end of a lie. I'm sorry, somebody else's truth that contradicts reality. Let's say you deposited $100 into the bank yesterday, but the banker's truth is that you didn't. Your sweet hundo, gone. Oh no. Let's say you got every answer on every test right, but the teacher's truth is that you flunked the whole grade. Now you have to repeat it. Your summer, gone. See, I think you get it. And I think you'd be fighting pretty hard for the truth, you know, the thing that corresponds to reality in those specific scenarios, because lies, I'm sorry, other people's truths that aren't true have huge consequences. Relativism is not only flawed, it's unlivable and unsustainable. And let's be honest, nobody wants a relative answer when they ask a real question, especially if it's directions to a gas station when you have to go to the bathroom. But wait a second, what if I say my favorite candy is M&Ms and you say your favorite candy is Snickers? See, what's true for me is not true for you in that sense, right? Well, actually, wrong. See, I'm saying it's true that my favorite candy is M&Ms and you are saying it's true that your favorite candy is Snickers. We're simply stating the truth about our preferences. Now, you gotta watch out for preferences, beliefs, and opinions trying to sneak their way into Truth's exclusive club. After all, you can prefer that you have a blue hat when you only have a white one, but it doesn't change the facts. You can believe the moon is made out of cheese, but it doesn't make it true. And it might be your opinion that five plus five is actually 13, but you'd be wrong. See, tricky word games don't change the truth. They get you nowhere. As Double Dubs would say, you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. But what about morality? Ah, that's the big one. One person thinks it's wrong to commit adultery, and another thinks it's not. So the one might say, I'm glad you have your truth, baby, but it doesn't work for me. First of all, what you think about the truth doesn't change it. A thing is either true or not, even moral duties and obligations. Second, truth is not dependent on the subject, that is you or me. It's objective. So whether it works for us or not, doesn't change what's actually true. Third, since these two claims are in direct opposition to one another, only one can be true. This is the irrefutable, unstoppable, unbreakable, incontrovertible law of non-contradiction smashing through the nonsensical, irrational, and weak wall of hocus-pocus relativism. And curiously, here we are today right where Pilate was. Having to deal with the one who calls himself the way, the truth, and the life, claiming that no one gets to the Father, that is God, except through him. That's either true or it's not. And we can either deal with it head on or we can, like Pilate and like Romans declares, suppress the truth and unrighteousness, which leads us to make claims like, what's true for you is not for me. Truth is relative. There is no truth, etc., etc., all of which heretofore have been debunked. Adios.